assaulted. Within a couple of months in the winter of 1977, two brutally victimized women's bodies had been discovered. Glasgow, it seemed, was home to a deranged killer. The police believed that both cases were linked and so dubbed the culprit the weekend killer and appealed to young women not to leave dance halls unescorted. Agnes's murder investigation went cold and her killer was still very much free. Two years later, two shepherds from Skipness, a village 115 miles north of Glasgow, found a body buried in just under two feet of soil. The skeletal remains belonged to Anna Kenny. Finally, she'd been found. With the bodies of three women now recovered, it was official. Glasgow had its very own serial killer. But who was he? And were Hilda, Agnes, and Anna his only victims? Tom Wood, welcome to Crime Files Cold Cases. It's lovely to see you. Have you any doubt that the three women, Agnes, Anna, and Hilda, were killed by the same man? No. And that man was? Angus Robertson Sinclair. Angus Robertson Sinclair. Let's do a little delving deeper into each of the individual murders then. Let me take you back a few years as well. What? exactly was Operation Trinity. Operation Trinity. Trinity was formed after we identified Angus Sinclair um, as being present at the murders of the two Edinburgh girls from the World's End, Helen and Christine. Okay. Um, we then started to look at Angus Sinclair and try and fill in all the pieces about where he had been and look at similar crimes. And we started looking at three crimes in the Strathclyde area, Anna Kenny, Hilda McCauley, Agnes Cooney, and I was appointed as the officer in overall command of the joint investigation. If you look at this pattern of murders, you've got to look at all murders of women which had taken place between 1968 and 2004. Now, two things about that. One is, I was amazed that that had not been done before. Mm. The second thing that struck me was that over that period of time, we looked at 1,034 cases where women had been murdered in Scotland. That's a lot of murders. It's horrific. That's almost a murder a fortnight over that period of over 30 years. Mm. But when, when, you, when you analyse them in detail, you find that Anna Kenny, Hilda McCauley, the two World's End girls, Helen and Christine, and Agnes Cooney, bear the unique hallmark, the signature of Angus Sinclair. Now, That's it. Let, let's park the World's End murders for a second okay. and talk about the three murders of Anna, Hilda, and Agnes. Okay. What was it that you felt linked those three murders? Right from the start, in the 1970s, in 78, 79, um, there was, a, there was a strong feeling um, in both Strathclyde and Lothian and Borders Police that there was a similarity between the, the, all of these cases. They had all um, been out at places of public entertainment at the weekend, either on a Friday or a Saturday night. They had all been found dead in places where Angus Sinclair had a knowledge and was associated. They were all tied with their own tights and Quite specifically, and this is very, very important, they were all gagged with their own underwear and the gag tied in a binding. This is quite unique, quite unique. Only, only that only happened in six cases out of the 1,034 that which we looked at. That's really quite, that's a, a, a compelling analysis that you've just given. Anna Kenny's body, uh, I mean, in your answer, uh, you, you talk about the connections that Angus Sinclair had to all the deposition sites. Yeah. But Anna Kenny's body took two years to discover? Yeah. First of all, Anna's body was found up in a very, very remote part of the Mull of Kintyre, where Angus Sinclair had gone fishing. So let's talk about the second of the three victims in this okay. kind of weekend okay. Okay. killer uh, triad, which would be Hilda McCauley. Yes. Can you tell us about her murder? 
She was 36 years old. She's at the oldest end of his victims. Um, but like uh, Anna, she uh, goes out uh, for the night. Uh, Hilda McCauley's uh, recovered the next day out at a place called Langbank, which is um, on a piece of waste ground. Hilda McCauley, she's the first of the victims to have a, a knife wound. Yeah. Now, the thing about Angus Sinclair was that he was quite a small man. Um, and, and therefore, mm -hmm. um, because he was a small man, all these crimes were attended with extreme violence and use of weapons. So in other words, if he, was, if he was going to rob someone, he had to overcome their resistance quickly. And you'll see in his robbery, he used a hammer and sometimes a knife. So this is the first time you see the use of weapons. And we see that use of weapons that be is introduced with Hilda, we see that becoming more manifest in relation to what happens to Agnes Cooney. Agnes Cooney was a physically very able girl. Um, she was very strong. So Agnes had gone along to help friends set up uh, music for a band. And she was last seen leaving the Clada Club. And she's found some distance away from where she disappeared. She's got knife injuries. There was also uh, an indication that she had been undressed and then dressed again. Mm. It was also very clear that she had put up a fight. What happened to the forensic evidence in relation to those three um, murders? There was a lot of murders. There were a lot of murders back then in the 70s and 80s. Quite commonly in the Strathclyde police area, there were 100 murders a year. Yep. And now, I think, for the whole of Scotland, there's only 60. So what happened was Strathclyde Police are very good people, but their systems were deficient. Their systems for the retention of forensic evidence, not the gathering, but the retention. What happened in some cases was that forensic materials submitted for analysis, if it proved negative, they were not retained in a forensic setting in the laboratory. They were returned to the senior investigating officer. First of all, that's not the proper way to retain forensic materials, um, nor is it the proper way in terms of audit trail. Because the point about forensic materials is that you've got to have a proper audit trail. And the Strathclyde officers I worked with in 2004 did everything they could, including searching, quality searching police buildings, contacting retired officers, asking them to look in the loft, etc., etc., all of that stuff. And um, I have no doubt, no doubt, that had these materials been stored properly, we would have found traces of Angus Sinclair on them. So will we ever be able, in your opinion, to show definitively who it was that murdered Anna, Agnes and Hilda? I'm afraid not. Uh, I mean, never say never. The truth of the matter is we built a compelling circumstantial case. Strathclyde Police did a super job in 2004 to show the links and to show these unique similarities between Angus Sinclair's actions at the World's End um, case with Helen and Christine and these other murders we've discussed. Um, but the lack of forensic evidence, the fact that the forensic materials had been lost was a fatal flaw. And the Crown, who have the right to do it, took the view there was insufficient evidence to, to prosecute. And I can't see now, with Angus Sinclair dead, and, you know, after another passage of time, um, I can't see that changing. Tom Wood, thank you for bringing Operation Trinity to life for us and for joining me on Crime Files Cold Cases. Mm -hmm.